What's up guys, John Rettinger here. Today is Monday, June 8th, the first day of Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, which is headlined by key Apple executives giving what turned out to be relatively large product announcements. So without further ado, let me go ahead and get started, and I'm going to actually begin at the end of the conference. There was not a cameo by Steve Jobs, by the way, in case you were wondering. So the conference ended with an announcement of a new iPhone, which was certainly much speculated. This model is called the iPhone 3GS. And excuse me if I'm looking down, the conference just ended and I've got a couple of pages of notes in front of me. So the S clearly stands for speed, and it looks almost exactly like the iPhone 3G. All these pictures we saw with the matte back turned out to not be true. It looks almost identical and you really can't see the difference physically. Internally though, there are some substantial changes. Let's start talking about those. So first, data tasks are almost uh, four times faster and speeds can go up to 7.2 megabits per second on HSDPA, which is quite fast. The camera was actually one of the big discussion points. It's now a three megapixel camera with a tap to autofocus and auto white balance. And as most people predicted, it now supports 30 frame per second VGA video recording with an editing feature, meaning you can now use your iPhone to record a video and actually edit it right on the phone, which is really cool and you can up upload it right to mobile me. You also get a built-in compass, which is kind of cool if you're, say, using Google Maps and you're looking at a location as you move your phone around, the Google Maps will pan. It's just another thing for developers to have access to. It's not that exciting, but it is nice that it's there. So there's also a new battery that they say will offer up to five hours of 3G talk time and nine hours of Wi-Fi internet usage. That was to be expected. Battery technology has changed over the years since the iPhone 3G was released. So you expect improved battery life and you expect things to be a little bit faster. It's, they didn't really get into processor specs, but certainly it appears that it's been upgraded. You'd expect the RAM and the ROM to all have been upgraded uh, as well. So moving on, there were, those are all things that we kind of predicted. There were some surprises as well. For example, now holding down the home button now enables a new voice control interface. So it's for voice dialing. You can actually use it in iTunes. Um, you can use it really for most things. So you can hold down the home button, say play a song like this if you're listening to a song in iTunes and it'll start playing. Or you can hold it down and say play Green Day. It'll start play, start playing. Or you can also hold it down and say call John Rettinger and it'll call John Rettinger. That's a feature that's been available on most phones, but the iPhone really didn't have it yet, so that'll be very nice. There is no word on whether or not that'll work with Bluetooth devices, but I assume if you're using a Bluetooth headset or speaker, you push a button on the headset or up on your speaker, and you'll have access to that voice command as well. It makes driving much safer, so that was quite nice. So on to the big thing, pricing. It's gonna come in two configurations, a 16 and 32 gigabyte model in both white or black, the 16 gig is going to run you $199, and the 32 gig is going to run you $299. The same price points as the iPhone 3G when it was released in 8 and 16 configurations. If these updates aren't enough to make you want to run out and get a 3GS, the good news is you can also now go pick up a 3G for $99 on a new AT&T contract or a contract extension, which is actually a pretty good deal. There wasn't that much of an update with the 3G hardware-wise. wasn't a front-facing camera like people were expecting. You know, Apple always has a tough time of living up to the expectations. Their products are hyped in forums and blogs, and I'm guilty of it myself. So anything that they do is generally bound to let you down a little bit. What they did do was bring the iPhone up to features that most people would expect. Things that are coming in 3.0 as well. MMS, voice dialing, they announced tethering, cut, copy, and paste, and landscape and portrait. All the things that probably should have been there from launch and a lot of things that people were griping about with the iPhone. You know, yeah, the iPhone's so great, but why doesn't it have MMS? I had it on my Nokia phone six years ago. You know, you always hear people say things like that. Well, those arguments and points are now rather moot. So that was very nice of Apple to <laughs> update it a little bit, although it was to a little bit of disappointment. So while the conference went on both ends of the spectrum to disappointing and exciting, let's get to some of the exciting stuff. So they opened the conference with laptop updates, which most people were not expecting actually. And they updated every laptop. So let me go ahead and tell you what they did here. So they loosed a new 15 inch MacBook Pro and it has the same uh, removable or non-removable battery as the 17 inch MacBook Pro, meaning you can't take the battery out and hot swap it. But 
because of that, they said that's going to last an average of seven hours, they're claiming, which is actually really impressive. Seven hours of battery life is really nice. And they say that the battery will last for five years or a thousand recharges, which is pretty cool. They also now added a SD card reader and they got rid of the express card slot, which not many people used. An SD card reader is really nice if you want some external storage or your video camera or camcorder to use an SD card slot, you can pop it in and you're now good to go. And that really was a welcome addition, I think, to the notebook line. So the nice thing they did was they also dropped the prices of the MacBook Pros. So I'll tell you the configurations that they're now coming in. For $16.99, you're going to get a 2.53 gigahertz, 4 giga RAM, GeForce 9400 graphics, 250 gigabyte hard drive, the SD card slot, and you have options for solid state. You can configure things differently. For uh, $1,999, you get a 2.63 gigahertz processor, the same specs, and now you also get the 9400M and 9600GT graphics processor. So you get two of the graphics cards. The lower end doesn't have both. And in the upper echelon for $2,299, you're getting 2.8 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM, the graphics cards, 500 gigabyte hard drives, they all have the SD card slots. The 17 inch MacBook Pro uh, remains the same uh, spec wise, but it did get a price cut to $2,499, which is really actually <laughs> Pretty good deal for what you're getting with that 17 incher. And all those models are shipping today. Apple also updated the MacBook line. So they now have the same built in battery as the MacBook Pros. Same thing that claims to have seven hours of battery life, five years, or a thousand charges, things I just uh, went over. But it can now support up to eight gigabytes of RAM, has a Firewire 800 port, and now has a backlit keyboard as standard. So the interesting thing now is this 13 incher that I'm talking about with potential for eight gigabytes of RAM with everything else is actually now called a MacBook Pro. So essentially there's now a 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is very cool. The MacBook line below that got a price cut and specs bump as well. For 1,199, you're gonna get a 2.26 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, two gigs of RAM, your GeForce 9400, 60 gig, 160 gigabyte hard drive, and an SD card slot. And for 1499, you're getting a little bit of a spec bump and a bigger hard drive. Also excitingly, at least for me, since I'm a big fan of the MacBook Air, it got spec update and price cut, which is actually quite nice. So the MacBook Air now starts at 1499. And you, for $14.99, you're now going to get a 1.86 Core 2 Duo processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, GeForce 9400, and 120 gigabyte spinning platter drive. Now, the cool thing, for $300 more, you're going to get a solid state drive at 128 gigabytes. You're also going to get a 2.13 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor. So for $300 more, you're getting quite a lot. And that solid straight model actually marks a $700 price drop from what the MacBook Air would cost you yesterday. And that's huge. So for 300 bucks, you're getting specs and the solid state drive. If you're in the market for a MacBook Air, you're really now getting a very full featured machine. They've had time to work out the kinks and I think it's a pretty solid deal at $17.99. So those are the laptop line, a little confusing now with a 13 inch MacBook Pro. So they also released Safari 4. They talked about it for quite a bit. The moral being, it's fast. It's much faster than IE8. They did some speed comparisons. It's no longer in beta. It's quick and it's available today. Uh, they also spent a lot of time on Snow Leopard, the follow-up to their operating system, Leopard. Again, a lot of things they talked about. 64-bit. It's fast. If you install it on any current machine, that currently is running Leopard, you're actually gonna save 60 gigabytes of space. So you do are saving a lot of room and you're getting a lot more for it. Now, one of the real cool things about Leopard is they're gonna be selling it as an upgrade for $29, which is absolutely unheard of for a full OS upgrade or $49 for a family pack if you need more licenses. That is really cool. That's gonna be shipping in September. The next thing they talked about is if that wasn't enough, was OS 3.0, and that'll be the operating system that's going to come on the new iPhone 3GS, or what you're gonna get on your current 3G. So there's a new feature called Find My iPhone, it's a service that helps you locate your lost phone, 
how to let you log into your MobileMe account and instantly show your phone on a map. You can even send a message to the phone saying, hey, my phone's lost, give a number for them to call, or hey, D-bag, you stole my phone, give it back and call in the police. If you, they don't give it back, you can now do a full remote wipe, which is kind of cool, get rid of all your information on it so they can't access your pictures, your email, or personal contacts, uh, which is quite nice. They also now finally turn by turn directions. They're partnering with TomTom. They're the first ones that are gonna introduce a full application uh, for turn by turn directions with maps. That'll be available in the App Store. No price was announced. And they're also releasing a dock for the car. Essentially, it's a suction cup that sticks to your windshield. Nothing terribly exciting, but turn by turn directions are very, very nice. Um, they also released a Scroll Motions Iceberg in app and bookstore for the iPhone. Think of it as a Kindle store for your iPhone. They're going to have more than 500 bestsellers at launch, 50 major magazines, and 170 daily papers with a total of a million books at launch, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, OS 3.0 will be free for all iPhone customers, so whether you got an original iPhone or a 3G, it's also unfortunately going to be $9.95 for iPod Touch owners. That'll be available worldwide for June 17th, or on June 17th. I should also say that the iPhone 3GS is going to be available on June 19th, so just a few days later. So Apple really ran the gamut of all the products. They did iPhones, laptops, talked about their operating system, released a new browser. What is unclear though is to what features you're going to get with OS 3.0 that are in the 3GS. Is the voice recognition, is that just an application that can be part of the operating system, or is that something that's hardware-based with the 3GS? They didn't really announce that, although I assume more information will kind of come out as the day progresses. Hope you guys enjoyed the brief overview of WWDC. I know this was a little longer video, but I could have talked for much longer about it, but I cut it down to just cover all the important stuff. What do you guys think about the updates? Were you excited about the 3GS? Was it underwhelming? Are you overwhelmed by what they said? Are the price cuts and new laptop specs enough for you to upgrade? Or are they not enough for you to upgrade? Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. For exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash john 4 lakers I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey guys, so since I just finished recording, there have been some updates that have come out. So let me go ahead and give you those right now. The first one regards pricing of the iPhone 3G and the iPhone 3GS. If you want one of the 8 gigabyte iPhone 3Gs and you're currently in your contract, it's going to run you $299. Obviously that's US, you're not going to qualify for that $999 price unless you're on a new contract or due for an upgrade. If you want an iPhone 3GS when they are released and you're mid-contract or you currently have an iPhone 3G and you're not due for an upgrade, it's gonna run you a whopping $399 or $499 for the 16 or 32 gigs. So no such good deal like you had with the iPhone 3G launch. It's gonna cost you $399 or $499 for those two phones. So just wanna give you an update. And to clarify about the MacBook and MacBook Pro updates, let me sum it up like this. The plastic MacBook is now the only MacBook available. Anything unibody that's not a MacBook Air is now called a MacBook Pro. Just thought I'd let you guys know and clear that up for you. Anyway, now I really will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.